Hi, I'm Martin Elliott. I'm with Mercedes-Benz of Birmingham. I'm a product specialist. Today we'll go over the Tiffin Wayfair with some frequently asked questions and also cover the Mbux or what's uh, known as the Mercedes-Benz user experience. We're inside the Wayfair now. Let's go over some features. We'll start with the key fob. There is an anchor point under the cup holders for your key fob. That's only there if your key battery is dead. Um, it's not gonna charge the key battery up. Uh, I prefer to keep mine in my pocket so I don't lock it in the coach. Uh, let's dissect the key now. Let's say you do have a dead battery and need access to the coach. You can hit the little chrome button on the back. That's gonna remove your bladed key, which you'll insert into the door. That's gonna get you in the coach. Let's also hit that chrome button again. We're gonna slide the back off the key fob. We need to replace this battery, but we, maybe we don't have a battery around. That's where I'm gonna come back down to the spot under the dash. I can insert this and I can still crank the vehicle. If you replace this battery, you know, you're just gonna pop this little Panasonic out and then get a new one back in there. Slide that back in and you're good to go. So if we're parking the coach for an extended amount of time and we wanna save uh, battery life, you can go to your lock button and hit it twice in rapid succession. You're gonna see the light come on. So I've just put this key fob to sleep. Uh, and that way it's not communicating with the vehicle, uh, you know, reducing your battery life. To wake it back up, simply hit unlock in rapid succession. And you'll see the light flash twice on the top of the key fob and your key is awake. Another thing with the uh, key fob you wanna be aware of, uh, you know, when you pull up to a campsite and you power your RV off, you know, if I immediately go back into the living quarters, uh, this front dash is still on. So you do want to make sure you at least open the driver's door, whether you get out that way or not. You will see, don't forget your key. That's your indicator that the, in, the front end of the vehicle is shut off. Let's just say you jump outside and realize, hey, I want to roll my windows back up because I left them down. You don't need to jump back inside and crank the vehicle. You can just hold the lock button down. And that's going to raise your windows. Or if you want to drop them down, you just do the opposite with the unlock button. All right, we're going to look at some steering wheel controls now, uh, dealing with your instrument cluster. So that's all going to be on the left side of the steering wheel. You'll notice a common theme in the coach. There's a home and back key right here. There'll be other spots where these keys will be separate, but they're integrated into one here. They essentially do the same thing. You know, the home key is going to take you all the way back out of a menu. The back key is going to line item you out of there. But with regards to the instrument cluster, um, you're essentially using the same function there. You notice to the just to the right of my home back key, there is a touchpad. It's going to function the same way as most smart devices, just by swiping up, down, left, or right. Uh, if I hit my home key, if you go left or right, you'll see the various menus within the instrument cluster. Uh, I'd say the majority of the time, I'm going to stay in the, the trip window because that's where your digital speedometer is. That's my favorite. Uh, you can also swipe up to uh, trip monitors, you know, from reset. That tells me how far this coach has been driven today. The next window up is going to be from start. And you can clear either of these trip monitors just by pressing in and holding on the touchpad. And that will zero your values out. If you keep on swiping up, uh, you can see there's, uh, that'll kind of tell you what you're doing if you're uh, balanced, coasting. If I go all the way to the top, there's your overall odometer. You can see this coach has 67 miles. If I press in again on that touchpad, I can clear that top value. If I go back to my home key, and that's where I'm gonna find the other options through the instrument cluster. Outside of trip, I would say the second most used is gonna be the service tab. So if I press down on that, you can see there's zero messages, but every now and then if you get some kind of service message and then you swipe it off of your home screen, it will be stored in that message window there. Um, you've also got an option for your death fluid. You can see this is filled up. Uh, that uh, death fluid's about a five gallon tank. You know, once it gets below halfway, it's gonna prompt you to fill it back up. Uh, get out of that. I've also got a SIS Plus. That's gonna tell me when I need to service the vehicle, which is uh, once a year, every 20,000 miles. There is no dipstick on the vehicle, so you're also gonna find a digital oil level. Hit my back key. You can also see there's a particle filter window down at the bottom. Uh, you won't need to check that that much. As long as you're getting the coach up to speed, that should burn itself off. 
Another thing I like with this instrument cluster, instead of having to check that depth fluid all this time, I think people probably wanna go all the way to the right to settings. I can come down to display and operation. And if I swipe to the left, you can say it's, it's showing reserve fuel right now, but if I swipe to the left, I've put a permanent depth fluid monitor up there. All right, we're still on the left side of the steering wheel. Outside of the home back key and the touchpad, the rest of the controls all deal with your adaptive Distronic cruise control. The top right button's on off, I press that. I've just made cruise available. It's, we're not active in cruise right now. I do have an icon at the top of the instrument cluster Let me know cruise is available. Now if I wanna set cruise, if I'm over 15 miles an hour, if you come down to the bottom panel on the left side, uh, this middle button here, if you just rock that forward, it's gonna set at whatever speed you're at. And of course that is your set plus minus to rock the speed up or down. This button does have a stage in it. You know, if I just wanna adjust in one mile increments, I'm just gonna feather it. But if I go hard up or down, you'll feel a little click point in there. If you do that, it'll hit the next five or zero. So up to a five mile per hour change. To the left of that, you've got resume and cancel. If I hit cancel here, my last posted speed will be posted next to the icon in the instrument cluster. So I'll know if I hit resume, if that's a, a good speed to be at, depending on the traffic situation. Uh, to the right side of the set plus minus, it looks like uh, railroad track icons. If I rock that up or down, you'll see in the instrument cluster here, it's out at four bars. Each, each time I hit that, it's uh, reducing my follow uh, distance by 50 foot in increments. I like to rock it all the way back and then see kind of what it's doing in traffic and if I need to extend that out to feel a little more comfortable uh, and just go to that rocker switch there. Okay now over to the right side of the steering wheel uh, the home back key we mentioned uh, there are separate buttons here but you have that same touch pad on the right side where you can swipe up down left or right uh, that's going to control everything in your instrument cluster or what you may have seen jargon for M Bucks or Mercedes-Benz user experience you see I can easily swipe left or right to change to the different options. You will notice there are hard keys here on the dash too, nav, map, telephone, radio, media, vehicle. Um, those are all options that are right here with, uh, in the instrument cluster. I prefer if I'm driving just to use the touch pad on the wheel. It's gonna be a little bit easier and you're not gonna have to focus as long on the, on the inbox screen. Also on the right side of the steering wheel, you've got a volume control where you can just roll that up or down. That also has a mute function if you press in on it. And after dark, maybe this screen's too bright, but I still wanna to listen to tunes. I can press in and hold. And that's gonna give me the option to turn the display off while still listening to music. Or as you also saw, you could turn the entire display off that way. Um, that can also be done from right here on the dash. There's a mute function, as well as if you press and hold. You also have that same option to turn display on or off. We're going over Mbux now. Uh, there's a companion app called Mercedes-Benz User Experience. I'd like to you to email me at some point uh, and I can get you connected on this. Uh, Mercedes dealer will have to verify that. So when you download the Mercedes Me Connect app, uh, all of your functions pair up. As far as RVers, the highlights are gonna be live traffic. You know, if I come over here to the nav map, you can see right now, the interstate has a green outline that's letting me know I've got free flowing traffic. You'll see a yellow outline if it's stagnant and red if it's stopped, which will give you the option to go here and do a reroute if you'd like or pull over and camp out. A few other great features with the Mercedes Me Connect app outside of live traffic are going to get navigation updates sent straight to the coach. Uh, you'll get a notice in the top right hand corner letting you know that those updates have been sent. We'll also send you over the air software updates, which will keep the computer updated. Uh, that way you don't have to make extra trips to a service center. One of the icons you'll see displayed above the picture of your cab chassis there in the app is gonna be a lock unlock feature. If you ever lock your keys in the coach, uh, you'll be able to retrieve them through the app. This app can be put on multiple devices. You're gonna initially set up with your email so anyone else you want using that, uh, the app, you just give them, they're gonna log in with your email and you'll input the six digit code in the app that's retrieved from the email. Another great feature with Mercedes Me Connect is gonna be remote diagnostics. You know, if you get any of your dash lights on, uh, just for peace of mind, you know, I wish we could wave a wand and, and, you know, fix your vehicle over the air, but at least we can tell you what fault codes we see coming up to give you peace of mind to either, hey, 
you know, get somewhere within this amount of miles or, you know, uh, let us come to you. Let's jump up to the overhead panel here. I want to go over the in-car telematics. Uh, there is a phone and wrench button here. If I press that, saying connecting to Mercedes Me Connect, I can end that call. You'll want to use that button if you ever need roadside assistance or anything else Mercedes related. Maybe you want to know where the nearest service center is to you or just, just general information. In emergency situations, you also have the SOS button. That emergency call will be triggered uh, if your airbags deploy, if your seatbelt tensioners catch, they're automatically gonna call the coach and ask if you're okay. If you don't respond within 30 seconds, they'll dispatch first responders to your location. Let's say it's a non-collision related emergency, that's where I can pop the tab and I can manually press the button. That's also gonna function the same way if you press that and they come over the air and ask if you're okay. If you don't respond within 30 seconds, they're gonna dispatch first responders to your location. Uh, if you are able, Anytime that system is triggered through collision or otherwise, also call 911. So you might have noticed you can't detach your sun visors, which doesn't make sense, you know, if you've got the sun coming in on this side. Uh, there's actually some transport clips you'll want to pull down on from the front here. Open your visors and you can slide these off and they're not good for anything other than preventing you from using the sun visor properly. Those just come that way for transport purposes. All right, you've probably noticed on your dash, there's a compartment uh, can be used for general storage. But more importantly, there's three USB-C connections there. The one on the left, you can see there's a tablet and phone icon. You'll have to hardwire into that, and that way you can utilize Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. It's going to basically integrate your smartphone into the inbox system. All right, let's look at the parking brake now. Uh, when you're camped out, of course, you want your parking brake engaged. But in order to give you a little more room in the back of the coach, you also want to be able to swivel your seat around. So while keeping the parking brake engaged without pulling up to release, if you just press straight down on it, you're in limp mode now. That will allow you to swivel your seat while keeping the parking brake engaged. But when you're ready to roll off, if you pull that brake back up and you don't give it a good pull up and then release, it will remain engaged. So you, if you're in limp mode, just give it a good yank all the way up and then you should see the light go off on your dash. We're going to save your seat position now. If you come over to the door where your seat adjustments are, uh, you've got an M123. Uh, you want to save that first position. You're going to simply press M for memory and then press 1 and you should hear a beep in the coach to let you know you successfully saved your seat. Uh, another good little tip, uh, you may want to save that third position. We call it the swivel position. Is if I'm going to go turn this seat around, I may run into my B pillar here. So what I want to do is get that at a good right angle. Maybe slide your seat up just a little bit. And now I'm going to be able to clear that B pillar. And to make it easy on you every time, I can just hit memory and three. So when you get out and pull up and get ready to camp, uh, when you get out of the door, just press the three and it should be primed so you can swivel your seat. Also, when that seat is swiveled, you may want to launch your steering wheel all the way into the dash because that'll give you a little room to maximize cabin space. Well, we just scratched the surface with the Mercedes-Benz user experience. Feel free to reach out to me at Mercedes-Benz of Birmingham anytime.